All right, guys. So I've been putting off making this video for a while, and I decided I'm just going to put it out there, let you guys know what's going on here and the future of the channel and my plans and all of that stuff, why I haven't been uploading and everything. Just going to throw it out there so you guys know, and maybe I can get some videos up soon and we can get the channel back rolling. But first, I want to start off with saying I'm not stopping the kayak videos. I'm not stopping the fishing content and stuff like that but I am gonna be taking the channel in a different direction. There's a lot of stuff that I do that I have projects that I don't think that I want to film or put on the channel because I don't think you guys would be interested or it really doesn't fit in with the kayak builds. And as you can see, there are no kayaks in the shop right now. They're actually stored in the, the garage in the basement. And I just got them out of the way because I've got other projects going on. And I don't feel that it's right for you guys or, or even me to constantly try to come up with new ways to build these kayaks. You know, I've been doing the kayak mod thing for a long time now, and there's really only so much you can do to kayaks. You know, I've put motors on several of them. We take them out and test them, graphs, lights, all the good stuff that everybody wants to add to their kayaks when new kayakers get in, you know, into the fishing scene and they want to build up these really cool kayaks. But you can only make so much content on that. And I've also got a passion for other projects that I do that don't fit the kayak channel. So I've kind of branded the channel as Kayak USA. You know, I've had it for, I think we've been on the channel for five years now. And I've got so many other projects and passions that I do that I always have to push those to the side so I can kind of run out here and squeeze out a kayak video. And here lately, it's just been I have to try to get the kayak video done for you guys and, and figure out a way to make some good content, make a good video and put it out there. And then after I'm done, I put all the kayak stuff up and I get back on the project, just like the chicken coop build that I showed you guys. I spent you know, a month working and building that after work every day. It's constantly stressing on what kayak video I was gonna put out because I didn't want to include that build. So I'm just gonna let you guys know, I'm gonna be putting different content on this channel. now. Before you unsubscribe and hit that you know button and leave. Screw you guys, I'm going home. Or give me a bad comment. I do want to say I'm not completely done with the kayak stuff. You know, it's winter time here. Well, it's supposed to be winter. It's actually 70 degrees out today. But as winter gets here, I've got other projects that I'm going to be doing. And some of you guys might like it. Some of you don't. If you don't, you know, you don't have to watch it, of course. So. I just want to film it and you guys to be part of the projects that I'm doing. I try to squeeze in different stuff over the years, like the camping trailer that I built last year on the channel. You know, it really wasn't kayak related. So I had to, you know, make an area to haul the kayaks up under the trailer and just to kind of, for me to fit it in on the kayak channel. But I, I don't want to do that anymore. I want to build what I want and I'll show you guys. I've actually got it behind you now on my next big project. And I want to go over the plans of that build and other builds that we're going to be doing here in the garage. For a long time, I've just been doing this off camera, like I said, and been squeezing the kayak stuff in just so I could have something to put out there. But I think there's a lot of you guys who hit me up and say you would be interested in stuff like this. And you're telling me, you know, I've told, you know, on Instagram and stuff, I've had conversations with people and they're like, yeah, I would like to see that. I'd watch whatever you put out there. So... We're gonna give it a shot. So but my main focus right now is on my next project, which is on the other side of my garage, which you guys don't really ever see. Let me turn you around. Right. So I'm currently working on a truck build. I'm wanting to build a little show truck out of a truck that I've got. I've got a 97 Nissan hard body that I'm building. Just pulled the motor out of it. I'm, I'll show you guys what I'm doing to it right now. But I wanna go over the plans for this truck and tell you why it's gonna be such a long process. This is gonna be a long build. I'm gonna be doing stuff that I have never done before. And I kinda of wanna document that. And I figured if I'm documenting it, maybe I should just stick it on YouTube and let you guys watch. It's not gonna be the typical TJ videos, you know, my typical 15, 20 minute videos where I'm, you know, all mic'd up and doing step-by-step -step installs and stuff like that for you guys. It's gonna be more along the lines of, I'm gonna film what I'm doing and as I'm learning, show you guys my mistakes and stuff like that and show you, you know, how I'm going to get to the point that I want the truck to look and what I plan on doing to it. So this is going to be more of like an hour long video every week or every two weeks. I haven't figured that out yet. Depends on 
how much time I can actually dedicate to this after work. And it's gonna be a lot of trial and error, me figuring out body work, fabrication, welding. I want to learn everything on this truck. So let me show you really quick what I'm working with. So this is the side of the shop that you guys really don't ever see. And this is the truck that I'm currently working on. So this is a 97 Nissan hard body. It's been in here for a few weeks now. I've just pulled the motor. As you can see, the bed has turned into box storage. I gotta burn a bunch of boxes this week. But this truck was my father-in-law's truck and he gave it to my son when he turned 16 and then my son blew the motor up so we bought him a Blazer. We can never let this truck leave the family because you know it's, it's a family heirloom. So we're gonna, you know, we've kind of made up our mind. We're gonna try to turn it into like a little show truck we can take to first Fridays and stuff like that. I got the motor pulled. The, the reason the motor is pulled is because it, my son ran it hot by mistake and it locked the motor up. It had 375,000 miles on it though, guys. So it, it was due and I don't wanna just build you know, a nice truck out of something that doesn't run well. So we're gonna learn how to rebuild the motor together. And let me set y'all back up. I know this is a completely different video than what y'all are uh, used to seeing here. So the plans for this truck is I want to rebuild the motor. We're gonna clean up the firewall, get everything looking really good under the hood first. Once the motor's in and it's running well, we are gonna start I'm gonna attempt a four link bag air, you know, air ride system on this truck. I, I've never done a four link. I have put airbags on trucks. When I was younger, little backstory here, my first truck ever was a 1990 Nissan Datsun pickup. I mean a 1980, not 90, it was an 80 Datsun. Uh, one of the first little Datsun mini trucks, I think they were, they were out way before that, maybe 72 or 73 or something like that. No, but I had the 80 and it was a $400 pickup truck. And something you guys probably don't know about me is I've been a mechanic my whole life. I was kind of a shade tree mechanic. And that Nissan Datsun that I got when I was 16 years old was how I got into building motors and fixing trucks, just it, cause it was a piece of crap. You know, if I wanted to drive it, I had to first fix it every day. There was something wrong with it every day. It was so rusted out that I would push the clutch into the floor sometimes and it would stick in the hole in the floor and I'd have to take my foot and pull the clutch back up out of the floorboard. You could see the concrete going by your feet when you drove it. So it was kind of a death trap, but I learned how to work on those little trucks back then. And ever since then, this is probably the fifth or sixth Nissan pickup that I've had. I've had several in the past. When I met my wife, I had a 97, just like this, but black, uh, and it was a stick shift. And when I dated my wife, we, we had that truck, uh, it was lowered. I put air shocks on it and I did a really cool thing. I'll tell you guys about it, maybe in a later video, but I, I did a cool air ride system with air shocks, not airbags. I've never four linked one where you have to cut the bed out, you cut the leaf springs off and you know get it to where this thing will sit on the ground. But I also wanna try different styles of, I'm going for a certain look of a patinaed, you know them old C10s you see where they're patinaed and it, now you can do the fake patina where if you don't know what patina is, it's when you see an old truck and it's got rust spots and it just looks weathered naturally, like the paint's rubbing off in certain places, the sun's baked the tops and the corners and stuff like that. I want to do like a baby blue aqua, like a 60s color, 70s color on this truck, get it lowered and do a pat fake patina on it and put the logo on the side, not the Kayak USA logo, probably my old logo that you guys also don't know about, but I'll probably put it on the door. And I just want to turn it into a really cool show truck because like I said, we have this thing around here called First Fridays in Gadsden, Alabama. And it's where all these, you know, really cool cars, you know, you go down to Nakalula Falls and we meet and there's, everybody's got their own rides that they built and stuff like that. And I kind of been wanting to get in that for a while, but to be honest, the kayaking stuff has been getting in the way of all of my mechanic and stuff and all of the, you know, building stuff. You know, I built a back porch here and the chicken coop and all that stuff that I've been doing and then trying to squeeze in the kayak stuff. So the kayak stuff's kind of been in the way, even though, you know, I enjoy doing it for the most part, but I really enjoy doing stuff like this. So I'm building a show truck and it's not gonna be an overnight process. This is gonna be quite a ways out. I'm, I'm saying it's gonna be probably a good year 
for me to get this how I want it because I've got to learn how to do all of this stuff. To do the four link, we're going to completely cut out the front suspension and the back suspension, take the bed off and do all of this stuff from scratch. And I'm going to learn it as I film it, but I kind of wanted to do this. I've been wanting to do it for a long time. I, I want to film for you guys, but like I said, if I get in deep with this, in order for me to do a kayak video, I then have to figure out a video. And another thing, I don't like doing videos that are fake. Like, I don't, I don't want to have to come up with an idea that involves a kayak just to put it on the channel. Because I feel fake when I do that. I see other channels do that, and you can just tell it's completely fake. And I've gotten to where I have to think of these ideas to do to my kayak to make a video to put out there on YouTube for you guys to see. And I don't want to be fake like that. I just want to be real. I want to be able to work in the garage. And if you guys want to continue to follow along, I really appreciate it. If you want to share the build, if it helps you out, if you know anybody that likes building these little mini trucks, stuff like this. You know, I've built a lot of four-wheel drive trucks, but I really like the mini trucks. And I know there's a lot of guys out there that appreciate stuff like this. So if you want to stay and hang out and watch me build this truck, you can. So that being said, it's probably going to be a good minute before I do any more kayak stuff on the channel. This is gonna take up a lot of my time. If we go get a nice day and we wanna go fishing, I might throw that out there. Like I said, I'm not deleting the kayak from the channel. I'm not getting rid of it. They're in the basement. And we're just gonna move forward with this and start filming what I'm doing in here. So my plan is to rebuild the motor, like I said, then we're gonna move on to the suspension. I'm gonna test out the patina here the, probably next week. After I get the motor tore down, I gotta send the head and the block to a machine shop down the road so they can surface it because I think the head got warped. These old KA motors are kind of like the Toyota 22 RE motors. You know, T Nissan's KA and the, the 22 RE from Toyota, they kind of come out around the same time and they're the best motors you can get, the best little four cylinder motors you can put in a vehicle. So, but the only downfall is the heads are aluminum and the block is steel. So when you run one hot without water like that, the main thing that happens is usually the aluminum head will warp. You'll blow the head gasket. That's what happened with this one. I don't know if you can see the board over there, but when I was before I pulled the motor, I did a compression check. Cylinders three and four had zero PSI. And then when I pulled the head, the head gasket was blown back there and I had two valves that were completely stuck open on the intake side. So I'm, I'm pretty sure that it's just the head, but we're gonna go ahead and get the block sent off. I'm gonna take it apart. All I got left to take off really is the water pump and the uh, the compressor for the AC. But once I get all that taken off, we're gonna clean it up, take it to the machine shop, and then I'm probably gonna move to the suspension, but I wanna test out the paint that I've been wanting to do with you guys. I've been watching a lot of YouTube videos on how to do that fake patina, and it's really neat the way the process is, and you don't have to be a professional painter, because I suck at auto body. I'm decent at painting, but fixing blemishes and stuff like that, doing the fine tuning and the clearing and the sanding and the clearing, I just don't want to go that deep with this truck. I want it to be more of a, a more of a shop truck, like a fab shop truck or whatever. So I want to test that out on these fenders because I plan on swapping these fenders anyway with full wheel drive fenders because they've got the extra little kick out here and I think we're gonna need that whenever we start laying it on the frame with the airbags so the tires will actually tuck. So. Probably next week, the motor was the motor will be at the shop, and I'm gonna pull these fenders off, and we're gonna I'll do a video where I learn how to do this fake patina or attempt the fake patina. But the way a fake patina is, if you've never seen it done, is you layer several coats of paint. Like what what I would do, and all I would do is scuff this fender up. I wouldn't do I wouldn't sand it down and stuff like that. We would scuff it up. We would add a layer of black. Uh, like tractor implement paint, like literally with a paintbrush. You put it on by a paintbrush. After it dries, you roll on a coat of primer. Uh, with me, I'm gonna go with that old school gray primer, or not gray, the old school red looking primer. I can't remember what it's called, but it's like a red primer. And you roll that on with like a, a house roller, like rolling walls. We'll roll that on top of that. Once it dries, I'm gonna go over it with a spray and I'm gonna spray it with that baby blue patina. I'll throw a picture up right here of the look I'm going for so you guys can kind of see. I'm going for this blue with a little bit of aqua, maybe lime, not lime, but aqua 
blue, whatever, baby blue. I want that look on this truck, and I think it'll look cool. I've looked all over the internet for someone who's done that to a hard body and haven't found one yet. So if you see one that color that's patinaed like that, uh, send it to me an email. I'd like to see it, but I've looked. Haven't laid eyes on one, but I think it will look really cool with this truck with some nice chrome wheels dropped to the ground with an air ride system. Once we get all that done, I'll figure out how I want to do the bed because if it's C-notched, we've got to cut a hole in the bed so the frame can come up through it when we slam it and stuff like that. But I've been wanting to do this for a very long time. So that's what we're going to do. The logo I'm going to go with the door is, let me show you guys real quick. You see that sign right there? That is my old business before YouTube. So before YouTube, I actually had a shop that I opened up. It was actually, I, I was a licensed auto body dealer and I had a licensed shop and a garage and I called it Grease Monkey Garage and I got to where I would buy these vehicles. I'm gonna move y'all back over here so the sun's not shining directly in my face. I got to where I would buy these vehicles before I got the license and I, and I figured out the name Grease Monkey Garage, I would buy vehicles and fix them up. And I've always had a bad habit of buying something, saying I'm gonna keep it, fix it up, and then I would just sell it and buy another one and start all over again. And then it took me a long time to figure out that my passion wasn't that, you know, that thing. It was actually doing the work. Like, I have a passion for that. Before I started YouTube and I was doing the Grease Monkey Garage, on the side of Grease Monkey Garage, when I was fixing up these cars and stuff, I had a full shop with a lift and I would fix up these cars and then sell them. I was also doing bass boats and I couldn't tell you guys, I've done dozens of bass boats. I would get on Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace, find an old Ranger or Stratus or something that I could get for cheap, you know, a thousand bucks or less. I would buy it, re-carpet it, fix the floor, gel coat it, paint it, and then I would sell it. And I, every time I bought the boat, I'd be like, all right, this is the one I'm keeping. Let's fix it up how I want it. And that's why the boats, I think they always turned out really nice is because every time I built something, I was building it in my mind for me. Like I did everything really tedious and I, I wanted it perfect and I did it for me. But then when I got done, I really didn't want to take the boat out that much. Like I wanted to stay home and work on something. So the first person who made me an offer I would sell it and then I would just find another one and do it. So I kept doing boats and boats and boats and that's what kind of moved me into the kayak game. When I made the first, you know, kayak mod video, it kind of blew up and everybody liked it. So I stuck with the kayaks because they're easy to mod and you can do so much stuff to them. As you've seen my kayak, it looks like a battleship down there. But I did the boats for a while and the cars for a while and then we moved into the kayaks and that's where I kind of, uh, I let Grease Monkey Garage go in 20, 16, I want to say, I kind of quit doing Grease Monkey Garage then, and, and then we moved out here and I got into the kayak stuff with you guys. So, But my passion has always been cars. I, I love the, the trucks and stuff that we've built. I built some really cool C10s. I built this 62, uh, I'm going to put it on the screen right here. I built this 62 C10 right before I started YouTube and we moved out here, and it was the last truck that I, I built. I built the motor, as you can see, I put some pictures up right here. This is the motor that I built. Uh, I built the motor, then I learned how to build the transmission. I rebuilt the transmission, did the frame, did the drop, we'll put the cab back on it. As soon as I got done with it, I never, I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I never even fired that motor over. First person who come over to the house, they seen it, they fell in love with it. He ragged me for about two weeks, telling me to sell it to him. And I got to the point where, I mean, it was time to drive it and keep it. And then he made me an offer and I sold it. And then I bought another truck and started all over again. But that was, that was the last full build that I did. And I loved building that little truck, that 62. And I think I had a 68 step side that I really didn't do a full build. I just got the motor running and it was really patinaed well and I sold it. And anyway, this one we can't get rid of. So that's a plus. This truck is a family heirloom. We're gonna keep it forever. It was my father-in-law's, so that, that's good for me. That I, I, you know, if I get bored with this one, at least all I can do is buy another one because this one ain't going nowhere. So this is going to turn into my shop truck, and we're going to run with it. I had an old B2200. That's where this thing, I don't know if y'all can see that. 
That's my tag off my old shop truck when I had Grease Monkey Garage. I had, I had a little lowered Mazda, and it was my, kind of my parts truck. I'd run around and get parts and stuff with it, and it was a cool little truck. But anyway, I'm gonna quit rambling on. This is the next video coming up. We're gonna do something to this truck. I don't know what yet. We're gonna maybe start with the suspension or removing the bed, something like that. They're gonna be more of a shop style video. I'm gonna set the camera up and we're just gonna get to it and figure this thing out. So that's it for this week, guys. I really appreciate all the support. I really do appreciate all the support. I'm not just saying that as an ending to a video. I really do appreciate you guys watching. I appreciate all the support on Instagram. I appreciate all my sponsors out there. I really appreciate you know, y'all sticking with me through all of this. And, uh, you know, I got a lot of fishing sponsors and I'm not doing a whole lot of fishing on the channel right now or, or the future, there's not gonna be a whole lot of fishing videos on here at all. So uh, I, I appreciate all the support from all of you guys. And I'll catch you next week when we start our 97 Nissan Lowrider build. Peace.